Shell has pledged to half its carbon emissions by 2030, and yet it spends more than $80 billion more on new oil and gas exploration and development than it does on renewables. Shell, in fact, spends more on green marketing than it does on green energy. It's like something out of the film, don't look up, but it's real. We're all 100% for sure gonna fucking die! As global warming turns the weather balmy, with an R, not an L, as they promised, Every creepy billionaire is suddenly at pains to let you know that they're an eco-warrior. We do only have one world. A lot of this problem can be fixed by um, you know, just cutting out you know, wasteful habits. Whilst also launching Space Ryanair. I'm an adult in a spaceship. Woo! And suddenly every fast fashion brand has a sustainable range, even though their clothes last about as long as the lunch breaks of the slaves in their sweatshops. We take environmental sustainability very seriously. Apparently, even the Illuminati have pledged to go carbon neutral on all their sex traffic by 2030, which is very ambitious. As the climate crisis gets worse, coincidentally, so does the greenwash. In rich countries like the UK, where carbon footprints are biggest, demand for sustainable stuff is four times what it was 20 years ago. Nearly half of all beauty products now come with some kind of environmental or ethical promise. As we hurtle towards the destruction of all life on Earth, corporations are really stepping up to sell us sustainable anti-aging cream. I'm worth it. And yet, according to government figures, over 40% of these claims are bollocks. The ramifications of misleading advertising can be serious. It's difficult to say exactly how many in-cell shootings can be blamed directly on the Lynx effect, but the answer is definitely all of them. But when it comes to greenwashing, the implications are even worse. Climate scientists are releasing reports as apocalyptic as the book of Exodus, but with more graphs. Even with all the promises from COP26 combined, promises, not actions, we're still on course for over two degrees of warming, which basically means a sixth mass extinction. Not to mention the almost unthinkable knock-on effect that might have on the economy. Given this, I'd take Mr Burns any day over one of these new cuddly, eco-friendly corporations telling us that everything's fine just when urgent action is most desperately needed. Release the hound. You may have seen recently that Shell said it will no longer fund the proposed Cambo offshore oil field in the North Sea, which is good news in a sort of armbands on the Titanic kind of way. Because despite the science saying that there can be no new oil and gas fields if we don't want to live in an apocalyptic hellscape, Shell is busy building loads of other new oil and gas fields. Iceberg, right ahead! Thank you. Now that not even Scotland wants them, Shell has been nosing around in places like Libya, where a decade-long civil war has made environmental oversight what you might call a little bit relaxed. There are regular offshore oil spills in Libya, but you'd never read about them in our media because we're more interested in Piers Morgan's opinions on sausage rolls. No, relax, I am not calling Meghan Markle a sausage roll. And you certainly won't see anything about Shell's new oil and gas projects on their Twitter feed, where it's all wind turbines and electric car charging stations. And yet for all of their performative tweets on cutting emissions, Shell is simultaneously fighting a court case in Holland which would force it to cut its emissions faster. Shell's clean energy investments since 2016 are estimated to be about $3.2 billion, which is brilliant, but it's dwarfed by the estimated $84 billion that they've spent on new oil and gas development and exploration, making the fossil fuel company slightly less forthcoming about its core business activities than Ghislaine Maxwell on a Girl Guides camping trip. This is Shell's hashtag make the future bio bean advertising campaign, in which they funded a project to turn used coffee into fuel which will power London's bus network. And it swept the world faster than a Piers Morgan brain burn. But vehicles as well. A revolutionary new biofuel made partially from used coffee grounds will now be added to the fuel supply for London's iconic bus system. According to the massive PR agency Helen Norton that did the promo for the campaign, in the first week alone there were 1,174 pieces of media coverage across the BBC, Bloomberg, CBS, ABC, The New York Times and more. Almost all of these reports mentioned that it was funded by Shell. Pretty good for a scheme that only ever fueled a single London bus for a year. No one really thinks about well, where does all that waste go to? The advertising company behind Shell's hashtag Make the Future campaign is called Winderman Thompson. At this year's Cannes Lion Advertising Awards, Winderman Thompson won a bronze lion for their World Wildlife Fund Nature is Calling for Help campaign. Given their work greenwashing for Shell, that's about as problematic as Nigel Farage winning a MOBO for a blackface rendition of Mysterious Girl by Peter Andre. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, government regulators are more absent than Boris Johnson on Father's Day, leaving the advertising industry to write its own rules and then police itself through the Advertising Standards Authority. Burglary was a very big problem here, but we are proud of the way we tackled it, because since we legalised burglary, there is no longer a problem. If the ASA does spot a bit of greenwash, it only has the power to politely ask a company to take the advert down. And how many times do you think it's done that to Shell in the last 10 years? Once. Meanwhile, the agencies that make these adverts are never penalised, which is perhaps why they're so shameless. In this industry-facing video, a company called Mediacom explains how they go about tricking people into not hating Shell so much. ...reported many groundbreaking energy ideas. But Shell is still best known as an oil company. Weird that, given that it's literally an oil company. We uncovered authentic pop science vloggers to tell Shell's story in a peer-to-peer -peer way. That doesn't sound particularly authentic. Through these partners, we were able to tell stories about the bright energy ideas supported by Shell. Then, we got into Millennials Newsfeed using Now This News, a social-only news publisher, and developed simple, accessible, shareable, newsfeed-worthy short-form videos across a range of energy topics. Social listening data showed Shell mentioned in almost three times as many conversations regarding innovation and technology, compared to their nearest direct competitor, BP. Yeah. And advocate voices were raised to defy cynics. With the Shell Influencer Collective, millennials changed their minds and they raised their voices. This is essentially an oil company catfishing us through woke social media news outlets and science influencers. Pretty creepy. Say what you want about Goebbels, but at least Nazi propaganda was easy to spot. In this post-Cambridge Analytica world, you must treat everything you encounter in life as if it might be a fucking advert. It is entirely plausible that you might wake up one day only to discover that your marriage and family are actually a piece of branded content for Google. Okay, Google, you want any biscuits? Maybe later. Thanks for offering. No problem, more for us. <laughs> Why not take the kids to learn about climate change at the Shell sponsored Our Future Planet exhibition at the Science Museum? Or what about the Adani Energy Revolution exhibition where you can learn about renewables? courtesy of a coal mining conglomerate. And don't worry about the fact that both sponsorship contracts include gagging clauses saying that the Science Museum can't damage the reputation of either company at all by saying something like, I don't know, Shell and Adani are a bunch of greenwashing fucking assholes that are destroying the fucking planet. <laughs> the fact that I'm more likely to get sued for saying that than Shell and Adani are for destroying the one life support system in the known universe says a lot about our priorities, methinks. Science not your thing? Well, why not get down to this Shell-funded pop song on top of the world in which Pixie Lot and Jennifer Hudson sing about solar panels and hydrogen-powered cars, though weirdly not about oil spills or extrajudicial killings in the Niger Delta. A much-needed campaign called the Creative Climate Disclosure has had over 170 ad agencies commit to disclose what proportion of their turnover comes from high-carbon clients like oil and gas. Obviously, the big ones like Mediacom and Wonderman Thompson and their massive multi-billion dollar parent company WPP would prefer not to say. But if you want honesty, don't ask the ad industry, just ask Shell who freely admit in their 2021 and beyond expenditure report that they plan to spend half a billion more on marketing than they do on renewables. Shell have made a lot of green promises over the last few years. How about in 2022, they promised to divert the billions they spend on green marketing to actual green projects. That really would be worthy of a can lion because it might just make me hate Shell a tiny, tiny bit less.